second video to show off Microverse Content Browser. If you're not familiar with the Content Browser, you can get to it by going to Windows Microverse Content Browser. And what I like to do is I like to dock it down here because it's designed to go uh, horizontal. Now, the Content Browser is a quick way uh, to create content with Microverse. Um, so first thing we need to do is actually create a Microverse uh, with terrain so that we have some basic terrain to work on. And then what I can do is just drag out uh, various stamps from the content browser to create terrain. Now I'm gonna go ahead and size this up so that we have a base to work off here. And I'm gonna center it in the center of this terrain. And now we have some basic terrain. Uh, there are different tabs here for different types of operations. Uh, so height is for height stamping. Uh, I can go to the texturing uh, tab here and just drag out some texturing. And now I immediately have a terrain with some height and texturing. These stamps are really just prefabs and you can create your own, which I won't get into this tutorial in this tutorial, but uh, it is discussed in the documentation. Now along the side, uh, we have different potential packs here, like the Tropical Forest pack, Castle Valley pack, uh, Castle Valley for HDRP, etc. And these are external content assets that are available from the asset store, which if you uh, own them and install them into your project, then stamps will appear for them. So in this project right now, I just have the examples from Microverse. So beyond height and texturing, we can also add vegetation. So for instance, if we drag out this cluster forest here, we can see that it's created a small forest uh, in this area. Now, once we've done that, we can go and adjust the stamp settings. Uh, for instance, I might decide that the fall off should be global and then have this appear over the whole terrain. Um, so this is a very fast way to create content. And uh, there are different types of objects here. So we can switch to objects, which has houses. Uh, audio to place uh, various audio features. Uh, biomes, which are essentially fully textured and um, uh, populated areas. Roads, if you have the road module installed. And the new global setting, which for uh, HDRP and URP has various time of day settings already set up in it. So if I drag one of these out, you can see I instantly get uh, a sunset scene here. And uh, I can drag different times of day. If I want to go to morning, afternoon, um, go to night, early in the night, and it'll set up all of my time of day settings for me automatically. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this cluster forest so we can show off uh, some new features here. Um, Besides dragging from the content browser, on some of these, uh, these tabs, you can also use other tools. So we have uh, the placement mode, which is the basically drag and drop right here. And then we have um, three other modes. One will create a spline path automatically for you. So if I select this mode and I just paint a path, you'll get a spline path created in the scene. And I can go to this blind path and raise it up, and you can see how it's affecting the train. I can also edit it. Uh, I can change the smoothness here to give it a wider, um, a wider fall off. Uh, change various settings, add texturing if I want to have it affect the texturing, etc. And so this is just a fast way to create your spline paths without having to go through Unity spline tools and using a nice painting interface. The next one here constrains the selected content to a spline. So if I select this pine forest with ferns here and I have it on this painting mode and I paint a spline, what you'll see is that it sets up a spline with a spline area uh, set to use that open spline. And then it sets up that content here, in this case, this pine forest with ferns to appear along that spline. Now we can go and adjust on this uh, fall off here. We can adjust this to be wider. Um, 
sorry, that's the fall off. If we adjust the width boost here, we could set this spline to be wider and create a larger area with this pine forest constrained to the spline. And you'll notice this is a full biome I'm dragging out, so it has texturing and it has uh, trees and the forest itself. And I can open this up further and adjust all of these things as well. So if I want um, the trees here uh, to have a different population, maybe I don't want to use the noise here and I want to make them constant, I can do things like that. Um, so that's an, a very nice way to quickly constrain content to a spline. So let's go ahead and delete that. And now I'm going to do the same thing, except I'm going to use this uh, final tool here, the spline area tool. And this tool uh, creates a closed spline. So you'll see as I draw, it's going to close this spline in whatever shape I draw it in. And then it'll create the spline area and populate the content in that area. And you can use this uh, with more than just uh, the biomes tab. You can use this with a vegetation tab, uh, with the audio tab. If you would like an audio region to be quickly created, uh, you can do it with a texturing tab. If you'd like just texturing and you can do it with height as well. So if I were to grab this um, meadows here, switch to my spline area and paint, you'll see that it creates a stamp and constrains it to this spline. Um, so then I can go in here and I can set uh, the blending modes and all the types of things. I can also set up this fall off. So let's go ahead and set the fall off to like 30. And now we have this height stamp constrained to the spline. And you can move this height stamp around. It's still uh, constrained to the spline. I can scale it, rotate it, etc. And whatever effect it has will be constrained to that spline with that fall off. I'm going to show something which isn't part of the content browser, but is uh, fairly recently added. And that is the concept of spline based noise. So if we go to this spline area here for the uh, forest, and we've created this uh, spline, we can add noise to this. Uh, let's say some FBM noise. Let's crank our amplitude. And you can see how that's affecting the edge of the spline, its position. If we change the amplitude to be even higher, let's say the amplitude is 100. And let's go ahead and set this to a much lower frequency. And you can see that this is distorting the path that we have laid down with noise. And we can use different types of noise on this as well to get very different effects um, from, our, from our noise and adjust its frequency, etc. And so this is a nice way to dirty up uh, the spline areas that you create and give them some uh, different look. So I'm going to turn that off. And um, that's how uh, we can use these spline areas, but sort of uh, get them a little bit dirtier than we would uh, normally have them instead of the clean spline lines that we have. Another thing I want to show is that the content browser now has a scaling option. So if you would like your icons bigger or smaller to fit more of them on the screen, you can do that. And the final thing I want to show is there's a special option on painting. So I'm going to go ahead and let me just get rid of this height stamp. And I'm going to make this area solid trees instead of using the noise on these trees. So turn off the noise. So now we have a pretty thick, dense forest, and maybe we want to paint a different forest in the center of this. There is a uh, little trick you can do, which is if I go to my other biome here and I select the conifer forest. And now if I hold down shift when I paint, this will add a clear stamp uh, to the stamp that we're creating and automatically clear away the other details. And maybe I want to turn off the noise here as well to just make it solid to make the example more clear. And now what we can see is that we've got our forest on the outside and we've cleared away uh, the details and the um, 
trees from the other forest and place them in here.